don't you go wow wow. First, let's agree on some terminology. Technically, HTML5 refers to a specific version of HTML, hypertext markup language, that we all know and love, and it spells out the structure and content of web pages. However, when we talk about HTML5 as web developers and designers, and especially in the context of web applications, we're actually talking about a stack that includes HTML5. Kind of like this stack. In this stack, from bottom to top, we've got HTML at the base for structure and content, then there's CSS, cascading style sheets for appearance, and finally JavaScript aka ECMAScript for programmability. Now let's define rich internet applications for the purposes of this discussion. By rich internet applications, we mean those applications embedded within web pages that rely on a plug-in runtime such as Flash or Silverlight. There's been a lot of talk about HTML5 and rich internet applications, and it's the sort of socio-politico-religio-complexo-migraino stuff that we geeks like to argue about. Partly because we have the time and talent invested in one or the other, and partly because that's the sort of intellectual exercise our big nerdy brains crave. But in the end, it's all about serving the users. We're like a bunch of magicians arguing about the best technique to pull a rabbit out of a hat while the audience just wants to see rabbits. If you don't believe me, go out and interview random non-technical people on the street and ask them if they'd rather watch YouTube as Flash video or implement it with a video tag. For bonus points, ask where they stand on the H.264 versus Og Theora issue. Rich internet application plugins like Flash and Silverlight came about to fill the gap between what you could do with HTML and what you could do with a full-on desktop application. That gap has closed considerably thanks to things like XML HTTP request, JavaScript DOM manipulation, and with HTML5, a metric buttload of goodies from graphics rendering to media playback to offline storage to drag and drop and so much more. And the spec for all this HTML5 goodness will be done really soon now, in the year 2022. 2022 is 12 years from now, and while I can't predict the future, what I can do is tell you what computing was like 12 years ago to illustrate the kind of changes that take place in that span of time. My system back then was a 233 MHz laptop, 10 times slower than my current machine, had 96 megs of RAM, 40 times less memory, I was accessing the web on my blazing fast 56k modem. CD-ROM stores were popping up everywhere and thriving. The top of the line handheld computing device was the Palm 3. The word weblog had been coined by John Barger only the year before, and it would be another year until Peter Merholt shortened it to blog. And finally, the closest thing to Facebook or Twitter that we had back then, at least in terms of influence anyways, was Napster, and that was still a year away. It's likely that when we finally have HTML5 locked down, the world will be quite different from the way it is now, and the spec could be obsolete, but that's okay. Although the final definition of HTML5 is a dozen years off, there's been a general consensus on many parts of it, and all the browser vendors are racing to implement those parts in slightly different, more or less compatible ways. Sometimes that means using browser-specific CSS, sometimes it means some browsers have implemented things that other browsers haven't, and sometimes it means that different browsers render things in different ways. In spite of all these minor annoyances and incompatibilities, this is still a good thing. HTML5 means we can write rich, interactive applications that serve the widest possible audience. It's not perfect, but the history of computing has always been about coming up with workarounds to build solutions with the available technology. One of these workarounds I've been talking about are rich internet application plugins like Silverlight and Flash. As I said earlier, they were made to fill the gap in functionality between web pages and desktop apps. And while HTML5 is closing that gap, that gap is still there. The existence of native phone applications, instead of them being all web-based, is proof of that. Rich internet application plugins, okay, you know what, I'm going to call them RIAs from now on. Well, 
They've been through many development and optimization cycles already. They're great for web apps that are heavy on performance, multimedia, or interactivity, whether they're business tools or games. Since they run on an independent runtime, they also provide the same experience regardless of the browser they're running in. For the time being, RIAs have these edges over HTML5. Now, that won't always be the case, but it will be for the next little while. The way I see it, it's a matter of choosing the right tool for the job. If the most important thing is to reach as wide an audience as possible, I'd say lean towards HTML5. On the other hand, if the most important thing is to provide rich, high-performance interactivity, I'd say lean towards RIAs. It doesn't have to be HTML5 versus RIAs, but rather HTML5 hooking up with RIAs where appropriate. They don't have to be married or even go out together all the time. They can just hook up when the need arises. I don't see them as enemies. I see them as friends with benefits. Bow, chicka, wow, wow.